Hello, this is Walter Leite. This video is part of uh, the example of chapter three of my book, Practical Propensity Score Methods Using R. In this example, I'll demonstrate how to do propensity score analysis with doubly robust estimation. Doubly robust estimation is um, a way to account for selection bias due to observed covariates in both the propensity score model and the outcome model. And it has advantages. Um, the main advantage is that it, um, if either your propensity score model or your outcome model are misspecified, but not both are misspecified, you still will obtain unbiased treatment effect estimates. So there are multiple ways uh, to do doubly robust estimation. Um, and the, I will demonstrate just one, one method for that. Here we will use the, um, the example of estimating the effect of Career Academy of Future Income using data from the Educational Longitudinal Study. I will use the survey package in R to do the double robust estimation. So here first we load the survey package and this option here is to deal with um, starting to have only one cluster and this is unique to the, um, it's something we have to do for the educational longitudinal study, it may not be necessary for the surveys. Now, uh, we load the data which already contains um, a survey design. Um, so the, the, the setup for this survey design is in a previous uh, video, which is uh, part seven. Um, and the first thing we do is to subset the data set. So here for doubly robust estimation, we already have the propensity scores. We are doing propensity score weighting. So we already have the propensity score weights and um, we already set a survey design, but now I want to set up a separate survey design for treated and untreated observations, okay? Because we will be taking double robust estimation by running separate regressions for both treatment and untreated observations and, and um, obtain potential outcomes um, that way as predicted values, okay? So, these lines here, they, they separate the survey design into the survey design for the treated and the survey design for the control. So if you don't have a complex data set, you would still use subset, but just with your original data set instead of um, a survey design object from the survey package. Then I will use this survey GLM function to fit separate regression models to both treated and control observations. Here I am fitting regression model where F2 earn P2 is the outcome, which is earnings. Um, and for doubly robust estimation, um, I'm using a strategy where I'm using the propensity scores as covariates, um, but I'm adding a, a linear quadratic cubic functions of the propensity score. This is one strategy. Um, a more popular strategy would be to add the most important covariates um, that you are controlling for uh, directly to, the, to this model um, instead of using the propensity scores. Okay, so, this is the model for the treated group and this is the model for the control group. Running separate models allows for the, the functional form of the relationship uh, between outcome and projectors to be different for both treatment and control group. Now, here we are interested in estimating the ATT, average treatment effect of the treated. So I'm using the function predicting them in the next steps to predict potential outcomes. So YT1 is the potential outcome of the treated 
when it's treated. So um, I'm using the function predict, using the model T, which is the model for the treated. And the new data is the, the original data set, but just for the treated cases, okay? Um, and type equals response, meaning I will get the, the predicted value will be the outcome, uh, which in this case is earnings. Now, the next potential outcome is YT0, which is the potential outcome of the treated in the control condition. So it's the potential outcome of the treated if it had not received the treatment. Now, um, here I'm using predict with the model for the untreated, but I, the new data is the data for the treated because I'm, I'm the, and this is because I am estimating the average treatment effect on the treated. So my, so for both potential outcomes, my frame of reference is the treated group, okay? So now in the next step, I obtain the difference between the potential outcomes of the treated in the treated condition and of the treated in the control condition. So those are individual treatment effects for the treated group. And therefore the average treatment effect on the treated with durable robust estimation, I use the fact the survey contrast function, which will get me an, um, which will average the individual treatment effects. So to average the, the diff, which are the individual difference, this is a vector of individual difference. I'm using um, a vector of weights, which is just one over the number of individual treatment effects I have. So these will, it is will obtain an average. So if I if I do here um, to show you how this looks, and diff shows me the individual treatment effects. Now if I do if I show ATT to DL. I have the contrast, which is the, the average treatment effect of the treated doubly robust. So that's how you do doubly robust estimation. Um, one way to do doubly robust estimation with propensity score analysis.